this one. There's a very famous photographer uh, who I do a lot of work with. His name is Sandro Miller. And he did a series uh, about two years ago with the actor John Malkovich. And they recreated all these famous, iconic movie posters. I mean, not movie posters, iconic magazine covers. And they recreated the job, played all the roles. And it was a knockout and it toured, and um, Sandra got many awards for it. And David had, Lynch had seen that, and he liked it very much and uh, praised it. And he suggested, uh, sort of suggested maybe Sandra would consider doing something with his work. And Sandra, conceptualist, is not really what he does. so. He had called me and he said, Stephen, would you possibly consider doing this? I know you usually don't just hire yourself out, but we collaborated before. So he said, no, this would be a lovely idea. So what you're going to see is a film we made, and it was sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is a uh, website builder, and they used it for David Lynch's foundation to raise money. And um, John Malkovich plays all the roles, and we chose seven or eight characters. And technically, I think you'll really like it because we were able to shoot that on 6K, which is a very wonderful format to work with. And when we got the offer, Red, which is the camera company, they got involved with us, and they suggested we they were developing what they that was an 8K camera that had never been used before. And when I found out we had the opportunity to be the first outfit ever to use that format, I was through the roof because, but unfortunately uh, they had a deadline and we wanted to meet the deadline, but the clients kept delaying the schedule. So we had to pass. And unfortunately, instead of us, um, NASA was the first person to use it, <laughs> which is pretty much my life. I mean, I go to the basement, and I get past, and NASA takes over, which is a great metaphor for how I have to deal with things. But that's the first. And then with Caligari, that was made um, about 1990, 89. And it's funny how I got this job. I think you guys will be interested in this. A producer had seen a rock video or something I had directed, and he didn't have a lot of money, and he was looking for a director and a writer. And he approached me, and he said, would you like to make a film? And I said, what's the budget? And he said, I have $175,000. And even in 1990, that's very little money. And I said, okay, uh, what do you want to do? And he said, well, the name Dr. Caligari is in public domain. So we can use that name. <laughs> and I said, so what you're telling me is you want me to take for $175,000 and make a film based on this extraordinary silent film? I said, I, I, I will fail. I mean, right off the bat, I, I, it's, it's not a good idea. He said, well, that's how we're going to do it. So I thought about it, and I said, is there anything else you want? He goes, well, of course, it also has to have a lot of sex in it. <laughs> I said, so I was just thinking all these Caligari, Caligari fanatics are going to absolutely not like this idea, but <laughs> I couldn't resist. So. Uh, myself and my writing partner, who is still very close to me, uh, I started with him at Hustler Magazine in the 1975, Jerry Saul, beautiful novelist. I would recommend anybody to get Jerry's books. They're fantastic. We wrote the script, and it's funny. I did have, I was figuring, how am I going to make this movie? I thought, well, I'm going to do a whole movie like theater and just build a soundstage, and I'll do all the film in front of it, because I'm an art director, and when you don't have money to make a movie, you have to think, what are my strengths? Well, I could build cheap sets and design them, so I decided to do that. But I needed a big studio. At the time, my studio was maybe 3,000 square feet, and I needed 10,000 square feet. Well, I have a friend, this is a, very interesting. 
There's a real connection between Dr. Caligari and the Doors, the rock group The Doors, because Ray Manzarek was the keyboardist for The Doors. He owned the soundstage. And he was a fan of my stuff, and I had used this studio for some of my bigger projects. So I said to Ray, can we shoot in the studio? And he said, absolutely, you can do it. And while I was making the movie, I had discovered that Ray had kept all the Doors equipment behind the cyclorama, which wrapped around the whole stage. So I went back there once, and all the Doors' old equipment was there, and speakers, and it had Jim Morrison's name on it. God, this is far more interesting than my movie. <laughs> and while I was doing Dr. Caligari, I came up with this idea. So what if halfway through the movie, I just stopped the film, and one of the actors just said, we're stopping the movie for a minute. We want to show you what's behind the set. <laughs> and they, I just sort of pictured her sauntering behind there and start showing the doors equipment. I said, anybody that liked this movie would probably find that fascinating. <laughs> but the producers just thought they did not like the idea. <laughs> they said they didn't think it would work. But subsequently, I got to use that because I did a rock video with Brian Wilson. And he was a guest star. I had done a video for a group I was very associated with called Walla Voodoo. And they were covering a Beach Boy song. So I had asked Brian. I wanted Brian in because he wrote the song. And at that time, Brian was under 24-7 psychiatric care. <laughs> so he said, well, if you want Brian to do it, you have to pitch the idea. I said to Brian, he said, no, to a psychiatrist. <laughs> I've pitched a lot of strange ideas before, but I had never pitched to a shrink. <laughs> so I go, and I pitch the idea, and lo and behold, he loved it. Then when we shot the video, Brian discovered the keyboards. And he started playing all the Beach Boy songs on all the Ray Manzarek keyboards. And once again, to show you how ignorant I am, I should have been filming that because it's far better than the video I did. But I, 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 I didn't. But that's a strange connection. And that's what happens when you're making low-budget films 30 years ago in Hollywood. You get these things to cross. So this is a there are no prints left of Dr. Caligari. I, there were 15 made, and it played a lot of cinemas and did very well. But the distribution company lost all the prints, and I had uh, all my prints stolen. So there's no print. However, I had the one-inch master that I had made from the original answer print. So this, what you're seeing, is a really super high quality transfer from my one inch master. So I think you this is about as good as it's gonna get. And I think I think you'll be happy with it. So thank you very much.